Show rates, the most difficult challenge. So what should we expect? Uh, this is really important to understand because show rates are so variable and they can be low when you start in remote. So if you don't expect that, if you just expect every single person you book in to show up in your first week or two, you're gonna get crushed because you're gonna find that that is the lowest metric that you could possibly have when you first start out. You're gonna get no shows left, right, and center. There's a very specific reason for that. We're gonna go into that in a sec, but we need to expect um, when you're new that you will have a significantly lower show rate uh, than you're potentially used to or even expecting, uh, especially door-to-door -door and in-home reps, right? <clears throat> so I'm not saying new to solar sales, I'm saying new to remote. Door-to-door uh, -door and in-home guys are not used to as low of a uh, show rate that many new guys hit in uh, remote on their first a few weeks. And because of that, they will, they'll will often freak out. Uh, and there's a very specific reason for that, especially if you're coming from the door-to-door -door or uh, in-home side of things. And we're gonna be jumping into that a, a bit today. But expect a minimal show rate when you first start out. It's just uh, the biggest challenge that you have in front of you. And with remote, it just so happens to be one of the first ones as well <clears throat> that you hit. Um, it will be a challenge in the first several weeks to figure out how to engage customers on the appointment setting call. It will feel strange front-loading the appointment setting call initially. We're gonna get into what that means in a sec. Um, and often we'll ask, well, you know, don't we put all the energy into the close? Uh, why are we front-loading the appointment setting? Uh, and when I jump into what that actually is, it'll make a bit more sense, but especially door-to-door -door and in-home reps are very much used to front-loading uh, or back-loading the close, putting all their energy into the close <clears throat> and uh, doing a, you know, a quick little uh, you know, two, three, four minute appointment set. Very, very different and remote. And initially, it will feel like you're putting energy into something that isn't producing results. This is completely and utterly normal. You're not gonna hit the jackpot in the first week of remote. That's not what remote's all about. You work your way up to getting real good, consistent results. And when you get to that point, oh, hey, by the way, you're also selling remotely from your computer on a beach in Mexico. That is the point of remote solar sales. It's not easy initially. It's tough to figure out. But when you crack that code and you really put the time and energy into and, and implement the, the correct strategies, when you're doing what you need to do, remote, uh, obviously, laptop uh, lifestyle is a hell of a lot more uh, nice for a majority of people than uh, door knocking and going uh, in-home and driving an hour, two hours between no shows all day long. So that's a bit about the challenge and, and what to expect. Let's take a look at the, the fundamentals of um, uh, why it is so uh, difficult to, to, to get good and healthy show rates uh, early on. <clears throat> Actually, let me take, did I skip a step there? Let's see. Nope, we're good. Okay, so uh, yes, that is what to expect. Fundamentals for, for decreasing your show rate, we're gonna get straight into it, is your, your show rate is a direct and immediate indication, correlation to the quality of appointment setting that you're doing. And in remote solar sales, I'm, I'll sound like a broken record because I say this all day long, every single day when I'm doing my training, <clears throat> remote solar sales is all about the appointment setting. So we call it the problem call. Instead of appointment setting, it is the problem call. Why? Because you have to front load that with value, with problem, with engagement, with yeses. And get to the extreme, in my opinion, you should be uh, closing on the appointment setting call, on the problem call, to the extent that the customer is saying, yes, I want exactly what you have to offer. And doing all of that on the appointment setting call. Your closing call, what I call the approval call, I try to take closing completely out of the second call, is not about convincing a customer to go solar. The appointment setting call, the problem call, that first call, that's where the convincing happens. That's where the framing happens. The closing call, the approval call, is really just to run finance and get uh, docs signed. That's where you should be aiming. Whereas traditional sales will teach you that appointment setting is delight and closing is where the magic happens, the objection handling, the convincing, and then you go for the close. I do not have that same philosophy when it comes to remote solar sales. You front load the appointment setting, get all the objections, get all your yeses, build that massive problem, have them already say, yes, I am in, in that appointment setting call, in that problem call. So when you get to the closing call, the closing call, you don't have to close. You don't need to close. It is just extremely assumptive, a quick structure, and you're getting to uh, uh, running finance in 10, 15 minutes. Easy. That's what it should be like. But because uh, this is so different than traditional sales, very often it is really difficult for people to wrap their heads around, like really difficult for them to get this. 
Oh, Josh, I get it. More problem, more problem, more problem. But they just don't get it. It's a mindset thing. It's a complete swap of what that appointment setting call, problem call, that initial interaction with your customer is all about. And it's really difficult for people to grasp that it is not, it is not just about setting the appointment. It is the closing, pretty much. 90% of the close happens in that appointment setting call, in that problem call, okay? So fundamentally important. So your show rate, meaning that you book in an appointment and it shows up or not, them showing up is a direct and immediate indication of the quality of the appointment that you have booked in, right? So show rate is one of the most impactful metrics that you can uh, keep track of because it's a direct indication of how well you're doing on one of the most important, difficult things in remote solar sales, that problem call, that first call with your customer. You see why this metric is so damn important, okay? Your show rate, if you have a healthy show rate, even if your close rate is low, your show rate is pumping, you will have opportunity and a ton of opportunity on your uh, closing calls to, to get in your, your laps, to, to get better. But if your show rate is minimal, if you're not doing what you need to do on the appointment setting call, if you're, you're uh, uh, you know, selling solar, if you're, you're um, asking permission constantly, if you're uh, leaving the, the, the entire authority to the customer on the appointment setting call, if in your head all you're trying to do is get a date and time that they want a call back, you, know, you will not get opportunity to close. There will be very, very few people that actually show up for that appointment. And that's just the law of remote solar sales. It's yes or no. You're doing the appointment setting correctly, the problem call correctly, or not correctly. And it is directly uh, shown in your show rate of whether you're doing things right or wrong. It's not the only metric. You could have an amazing show rate, but a super low close rate. That probably means you're getting people to show, but the framing of what that closing call, that approval call is all about is wrong. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, those, those metrics interplay there. However, your show rate is a fundamental metric that is directly correlated to your skill when it comes to the most important, uh, most challenging piece of all remote solar sales, that appointment setting call, right? So let's jump into some fundamentals of what directly impacts show rate and how to increase your show rate and how to maintain a healthy show rate. Number one, problem building. Problem building. Problem building. Problem building. You're not selling solar. You're highlighting problems and you potentially have solutions for customers. Stop selling solar. If you sell solar in your appointment setting call, try to convince them how amazing solar is, show them all the features, all the benefits of solar, blah, blah, blah. No one gives a rat's ass about solar. Nobody. Nobody cares about solar. Stop trying to sell solar. No one is out there going, I want to get solar because it looks good on my roof. I want to get solar because it has a positive impact on the environment. Those are nice thoughts. They are not why people go solar. So the people go solar because solar is just happens to be one of, if not the best thing right now that solves the problems that they have, right? I've said this a million times before. If a device was launched by uh, Apple tomorrow and you just plugged it into your, your main panel and it dropped your power bill by 50%, we would not be selling solar because this new device, which had double the commissions and was half the price, would, is solving the exact same problems that our customers want to solve. Right? We are not in the solar industry on the front end on sales. Problem building in that appointment setting call, especially in remote when it's so important to really give them a reason to show up to that second interaction is fundamental. If, you have, if you're only talking about utility rate increases for 10 seconds and then you move on to how cool your panels are or how cool the program is, or uh, you're not going to get anywhere. You need an emotional engagement with your customer's problem. <clears throat> and the rule is that if they uh, put the phone down uh, after you do that call and they have the same understanding of their problem and they, they feel their problem the same uh, from before they picked up the phone with you, they're not gonna show up for that appointment. It is your job to take that problem, show them their problem and highlight it such that when they put that uh, the phone down at the end of the, the phone call, the appointment setting call, they feel it more, a lot more, than what they did when they picked up the phone. You are highlighting that. You're showing them how dire of a situation it actually is. You know, not many people think about rate increases, what exponential rate increases do over a year, five years, 10 years. Not a lot of people think about this, right? It is, it is a problem that they know is there, but they haven't focused on it. It is your job to say, no, this is the dragon in front of you. It is going to kill you. You need to solve it now. I have a sword. Solve it now, or you're not gonna be in a good place in the next five, 10 years. You have to focus on that problem. No one gives a rat's ass about a solution to a problem they don't think they have. 
A problem, if they really are engaged with that problem, will make them move mountains. But it doesn't matter how amazing you describe solar or solar panels or solar panel technology, it will not uh, get them to take uh, any important action. Problem is everything. That's why we call it the problem call. If your problem call isn't good, your show rate is low. If your problem call is awesome, customers will send you their electricity bill and ask if there's anything else that you need from them and show up on time every time uh, during those, uh, at those appointments because they want to solve that problem, right? Problem billing. Nobody will care enough about the appointment unless they truly feel the problem that the appointment is meant to solve, okay? Value adding. This is more of a, a generalized thing here, but uh, when I say value, I'm talking about a lot of things. You know, if you build your problem uh, enough and then you present a potential solution, there's value there. Value is an authority and how you control the conversation and your rapport with customer. Uh, there's so many things. I, I just, I'm throwing this in here as sort of a macro generalized things before I get uh, deeper. Everything is based off of value. And so I think it's really important to realize why people don't show up for appointments because they have something going on at that time that is more valuable than what you have for them. And a vast majority of times, that could be just watching Netflix, watching TV, watching the news. Because people, sales pros are so bad at adding value to people's uh, uh, situations on the, the problem call, right? Uh, so I have a rule I call the beer appointment rule. The beer appointment rule is if at the end of that call, you can objectively ask yourself, have I added enough value to this person? So that, again, that could be the problem. Um, building that problem up enough, having authority with them, rapport, uh, really showing them uh, the, the future of their, their, their bill, uh, the, the lack of dependence, uh, independence that they have, the control that the utility company has, on, whatever that is. Have you been able to add enough value such that, let's say you have a 5 p.m. Book in, booked in tomorrow, they get a call from their buddies at 4.45 p.m. saying, hey man, we're going to the local pub, let's have a few beers, Charlie got off early today. Are they looking at their calendar and, say, and thinking, huh, well, you know, I, I could go to the, the, the pub, but I, this, this appointment is really damn important, so I'm gonna say no to the boys. Are they doing that? If the answer is no, you need to work on that value add because them going to the pub and having a few beers is damn uh, less important than uh, them solving their problem with the utility rate increases that are happening now and will continue to happen for the rest of their life. It is very important, right? And if you don't feel you can build that, don't get off the phone until you feel like you've built enough value for them to prioritize that appointment tomorrow at the time that you said, okay? Value adding. Is talking uh, about what uh, I'm talking about uh, actually bringing value to this person's life or am I just reading words from a script? You gotta ask yourself that every single day of the week. Am I reading these words and are they adding value? Are they building problem? Are they giving them a reason to show up? Or are they just words that sound good on this paper? Always constantly challenge yourself in terms of your script, what the content that you're filling that problem call with and what you're saying to customers. Uh, some more fundamentals, real engagement. Real engagement, that's a key point there, not fake engagement. A lot of people will try to get out engagement and, and uh, uh, there's, I, there's real customer engagement and then there's no engagement. Those are the only two options here. What does real engagement look like? If, if you are uh, only uh, the, the only one talking, right? As I said there, a majority of solar appointment setting calls are 90% of the solar pro talking and only 10% of the customer talking. A majority that I listen to are like that. It's, it's, it's crazy. If you mapped out customer uh, and solar pro uh, words, it's just solar pro, solar pro, solar pro, solar customer, yes. Solar pro, solar pro, solar pro, customer, I don't think so. Solar pro, solar pro, solar pro, customer, yes. It's wild if you actually map out how much customers in general on average actually talk into problem calls, and majority of solar pros are talking 99% uh, percent of the time, right? You're not gonna be able to get engagement or any sort of commitment. You might feel like you've said a lot of good stuff, a lot of words, you've really given it your all, but the customer has only said yes to you four times since you started the conversation, and now you're about to wrap up and expect them to send you a utility bill and sit that appointment, show for that appointment. Not gonna happen. Engagement is so damn important, right? Um, so on real engagement, what does that look like? Well, get them talking. Don't ask yes or no questions, for example. When you ask yes or no questions, you're actually encouraging those types of customers. So uh, a lot of people would be like, okay, how, I have to get engagement, I have to ask questions. And they'll, they'll ask a question where all the customer has to say is, yep. Okay, well, well how about this, Mr. Customer? Uh, yep. That's not engagement. You, you asking a yes question, them saying yes to you is not an engagement. So instead of you saying, 
Uh, oh man, that's, that's getting up there, Mr. Customer, isn't it? You probably want to get that bill down. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Man, that's, get, that's getting up there, Mr. Customer. You're at $300 a month. When's the last time it was at $300 a month? Is that the, what, was it last year? Tell me a bit about how, how much you spent over the past few years. The customer has to say a bit more than, uh, yep. Get them out of their shell. Start asking questions that don't end in yes or no, right? Engagement is so damn important. Per, a, a perfect appointment setting call, you should be talking maybe 60% of the time or maybe a bit more. The customer needs to have some really good engagement in there, right? Um, obviously, the other end of the spectrum of the customer talking more than you, what does that look like? They're taking control of the conversation. So there's a line. But you cannot be the one that's talking for 80, 90, 99% of the time and all, only have the customer say yes uh, or uh, yep to you, uh, you know, four times over the period of uh, the appointment. Ask them questions, uh, get them involved in uh, the conversation, right? Get them telling stories, not just giving you yes or no's. Hard future pacing, so damn important. Future pacing, what does future pacing mean? Future pacing is when you tell people what is going to happen and you frame for the future. You don't keep it a secret. Far too many solar pros try to hide the fact to their customer that they're going to try to close them and get them installed and schedule install on the, uh, the day of the close. And it, it's crazy for me. I, I am not that brave. But all you closers out there that want to tell the customer that they're going to close them the last minute of the closing call, good on you. Good luck with closing though. I have a very different approach. I like to be very straightforward with people and tell them I will be closing them on the, uh, the appointment coming up. So what does that look like? Well, there's a, a few ways to, to frame it there. But having some sort of action that you want to happen on the appointment setting, on the closing call rather, the approval call, and letting them know that that action will happen on that day. And the, the, uh, the traditional way of, of uh, solar sales, remote solar sales uh, in general, doesn't work uh, this way because you'll be going, oh, and Mr. Customer, you know, tomorrow at 4 p.m., all I'll ask is that you make a decision. I've heard that one before. It's like a, it, it's, uh, it, it rubs me the wrong way. It's crazy. There's a very specific way to frame uh, that you are going to be closing them on that call. I always say I'm the laziest closer in the world. I want to do all my work. I want to front load my appointment setting call, my problem call on the first call. And I want to close the customer on the first call. I want to tell them when I book that appointment in what exactly is going to happen on the appointment we have, the closing call, the approval call tomorrow at 4 p.m. Exactly. Mr. Customer, so this is what's going to happen. If we do get you approved, bill's going down, we're getting you installed, you're not having to take any extra cash out of your pocket. Um, we'll line up a schedule uh, install on that day and uh, uh, we'll get you as independent from the utility company as possible. Sound like a good goal, John? Let's make it happen, shall we? I need a yes from that. I don't want to get off the call on the appointment setting call until I get a straight yes that they are literally telling me, yes, Josh, if I get approved, I'm going solar. I'm scheduling install on that uh, uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. I want to close. I want the almost 99% of the close to be done so the closing call, the approval call, does not need to be a ton of work. I don't want to have to convince anybody of anything on the closing call. I want all the work to be done. And that can easily be done, not easily, but it can be done on the, uh, the appointment setting call, the problem call, if you put that work in and engage the customer the most. But for those out there that wait to the, the closing call to, to actually make that happen, then you start getting things like, uh, I need to think about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult time right now. I didn't know I needed to make a decision. These are um, the stupid, stupid objections that could have been handled if you just told the customer more transparent with them about what the, the call was, uh, uh, was going to be about, right? So when you're future pacing, if you're using this traditional, um, yeah, you know, so Mr. Customer, we'll take a look at the numbers tomorrow. You know, we'll take a look at the savings. You know, well, we'll see what the results are. Uh, you're booking in what I'm uh, calling now these days a results call. All the customer is expecting, put yourself in the customer's shoes. What they hear is you're going to call them tomorrow, tomorrow to see what they would save with solar if they went solar. That's not a closing call. That is not a high closable uh, call. A high closable call is, Mr. Customer, uh, we're going to see if we get you approved tomorrow, see if we can put some money in your pocket. And if, if so, we're going to schedule install tomorrow. And we're going to get you away from that utility company as much as possible. Sound like a goal? Immediate, direct, straightforward goal that the customer is aware of. And so they have the, the night to prep themselves. Okay, if I save money, I'm going solar tomorrow. Whereas if you spring it on them in the last second, which is what a majority of people do, unfortunately, it's not a nice time. And that's where you start getting all these objections at the end of your closing, which is completely uh, unnecessary, right? 
So don't be afraid to tell them your plans on the approval call, closing call. You're right. On the call tomorrow at 1 p.m., John, this is what is going to happen. We are going to go for the approval. We are going to, to make this happen. Uh, um, if we get that approval, we're going to wrap everything up there and uh, uh, see if we can schedule install right there and then to get away from the utility company as soon as damn possible. Right? Give them a straightforward path. Um, completely also remove any customer decision language. So customer decision language would be, you know, and John, if you like the numbers, if the numbers look good to you, then we can move forward. We can get to the next step. If it looks good to you, customer decision numbers. Uh, this is, you know, just stupid. I, I don't understand why solar pros do this. They always, they, the customer will tell them like five to 10 times, yeah, I want to save some money, but then they'll still base the, the decision uh, of the customer going solar on whether the customer likes the numbers. They already said they want to save money, right? Are you saying that you can't uh, save money with them with, with solar? It, 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 what are you doing? Numbers are always good in solar. They always work out pretty damn well if you're doing the numbers properly. So stop asking a customer, stop using customer-based, uh, customer decision-based language. Stop saying, oh, if you like the savings, if the numbers look good to you, you know, we'll drop the proposal and if it looks good to you, no, they've already told you they want to save money. That is, not, that is done. They don't need to tell you that again, okay? Put that to the side. Uh, to the side. Um, and instead, talk about your end goal, right? So getting finance approval, scheduling their install, something on that appointment setting call. Um, and if, you're, if your customer has already said they want to save money, tell them exactly what will happen on the approval closing call in order for that to happen, right? So you start seeing uh, things here. On that appointment setting call, on that problem call, they have said, you, you've uh, you know, pre-closed them a few times, we're about to get into pre-closing here in a sec, that yes, they wanna save cash. If they can put cash in their pocket without taking any extra cash out of their pocket, uh, then they're good to go, right? They, they like the idea of saving money. Awesome, fantastic. So instead of saying, well, look, customer, uh, Mr. Customer, look, look John, we'll, we'll take a look at the numbers tomorrow. If it looks good, we can move ahead. Instead of saying that, just trust them that they weren't lying to you the past five to 10 times when they told you the past five to 10 minutes throughout your appointment setting call that they wanted to save money. Assume that that is still the case and it hasn't changed since they uh, said that last to you two minutes ago on the call and just tell them, okay, John, so you told me you want to save money. This is what we're going to do tomorrow to make that happen. That's it. You're giving them an end goal. You've passed the point of decision already, right? I, I feel a lot of sales uh, professionals will require the customer to close themselves. So what I mean by that is that the, the sales pro will, will not think they've done enough. They haven't gotten enough engagement, enough yes, and so they'll constantly go back to the customer and say, does that look good? You know, is that something you wanna do? And they'll like just get, have to get everything, and eventually they're waiting for the customer to say, all right, I want it already. What do I need to do next? Whereas sales, our job is to minimize the friction uh, necessary for customers to make uh, decisions. And so uh, the easiest way to minimize that friction is to Take the, at their uh, at the word, them saying, yes, yeah, yeah, I'd like to save some money. Awesome. That means that they would like to go solar. So don't mess the numbers up in the design, save them a bit of cash, and then tell them what they need to do in order to get what they already told you they want, right? Stop adding friction to the decision making. Stop making it about their decision. Start making it about them going solar on that call. And when you do that, when you future pace that hard, when you prepare them uh, that uh, for them, um, they see the structure, they see something's happening. Whereas if you pitch it as and frame it as, so yeah, we'll take a look at the numbers tomorrow, we'll see what it looks like. In their brain, that's not exciting. They, they can do that any day of the week. They can call a random solar company, they can call you back and reschedule. And so their show rate is, is uh, uh, them showing up to that appointment is not as important. Whereas if you are going to that appointment in future pacing and saying, this is what we're going to do tomorrow, A, B, C, and D, and we are going to make you independent from uh, your utility provider as much as possible if you get approved on that call tomorrow, there is an action, there's an event, there's something to look forward to as opposed to just see what the numbers look like. Oh, he's trying to sell me something. So future pacing really, really gets your customers in the, the mind space of tomorrow, expecting what they need to expect and uh, showing up to those appointments a lot more.